In this video, we'll take a look at how you can clear all kinds of cache that can build up on your computer. Windows 10 will tend to store a significant amount of cache in order to make your computer run faster and being able to load files and data more efficiently. However, this can at times come at a cost of using up more CPU, RAM and even disk space. And if you don't have lots of resources and disk space available, you can notice issues and your computer can even run slower. By clearing the cache periodically, you'll notice a number of benefits in the performance of your computer and this will also free up extra disk space. The first place we'll start is for temp files which can build up in your profile. Let's open up a run window to do this. You can open this by pressing the Windows key plus R, which will bring the window up in the left hand corner. Or you can just do a search in the taskbar for this by typing in run and select the run app at the top of the results. Now type in percent temp percent and enter. You can see this loads a window with lots of temporary files. I'll select all of the files here and select delete. If you get a prompt on some files like this then that's okay as it's saying some temp files are still in use. Just tick the box for do this for all current items and then select skip. This will leave any temp files currently being used where they are. Next we'll go and clear the windows temporary files. Open up a run window for this and this time we'll type in just temp and hit enter. It's safe to delete these files because they won't let you delete a file or a folder that's in use and any files not in use won't be needed again. Again we'll select all these files by pressing Control plus A or you can just use the select all option in the top right hand corner and then delete. If you encounter a warning about some temp files still being in use you can just select the do this for all current items and select skip. The Windows Store cache is another area that can be cleared. The wsreset.exe command is used to reset or clear the Windows Store without changing the account settings or deleting installed applications. To clear the Windows Store cache, open up a run window and type in wsreset.exe. This will work away in the background to clear the Windows Store cache. Once this task has been completed, you'll then see the Windows Store load up ready for you to use again. When you install your monthly Windows update on your computer, sometimes these updates can loom on your computer until they're cleared. If you want to delete these manually, then open File Explorer and go into the C drive, Windows, scroll down and go into the software distribution folder. Here is where Windows keeps all of its Windows updates, data and downloads. Go into the download folder and here you can see some old files and folders which can be deleted. I'll select all of these and delete them. If you get prompted for permission when trying to delete these files and folders you can just select continue. You may notice that Windows keeps a list of your files and folders that you've accessed recently in File Explorer. Now this can be handy, but this is stored in the File Explorer cache which we can go ahead and clear. To do this, click on the View tab at the top of File Explorer, then go across to Options. This will load a Folder Options window, and if you check down in the Privacy section, you can see that you can clear the File Explorer history by selecting Clear. Even though it doesn't give you a message to say it's cleared, once you've selected this, it will have been cleared. One place where a lot of cache tends to build up is in your web browsers, and it's always good to clear these on a regular basis. I have a few browsers installed, so let's go and open up my first browser, Chrome. Go up to the top right hand corner and click on the three dots. Now go to History then history again. This brings you into the history page for Chrome and you want to go to the clear browsing data on the left hand side. Now this will give you two menus. The first is for basic where you can delete your browsing history, cookies and other site data and cached images and files. You can select the time range for when you want to clear stored data from one hour to everything 
which comes under all time. We'll leave this on all time so everything stored under these areas will be deleted. If you go to the advanced tab, this gives you a few more options that you can tick. These include download history, which is already ticked. And if you scroll further down, you can clear passwords, autofill data, site settings and hosted app data. I'm going to leave them set as they are. And I'll change the time range so it clears everything by selecting all time. Select clear data. And when that's done, let's close Chrome. Next, I'll go into my Edge browser and go to the top right hand corner to get into the settings menu and select history. Then the three dots for more options. Then select clear browsing data. Again, this gives you a similar layout like in Chrome. I'm going to make sure the time range is set to all time to delete everything. I'm going to leave all default options ticked for browsing and download history, cookies and other site data, and cached images and files. Select clear now. And that's completed. So let's go ahead and close Edge. And we'll go into my final browser, which is Firefox. Go up to the three bars to open the menu, then down to options and privacy and security on the left hand side. And if you scroll down the page, you can see the first place you can clear up is for cookies and site data. Select clear data. This window also tells you that cached web content will also be cleared. Leave both selected and select clear. It warns you that it may sign you out of any websites that you're currently logged into, meaning that you'll need to log back in. I'll select clear now to this. And if you scroll further down the page, then you'll be able to see where you can clear your history. Select clear history. Here, it will tell you what will be cleared in the process. I'll change the time range so that it clears everything. And select OK to finish up the cleaning process in Firefox. For the next place to clear cache, we'll take a look at the built-in disk cleanup utility within Windows 10. Do a search in the taskbar for disk cleanup. And select disk cleanup from the results. Here it gets you to select the drive you want to clean up. My operating system is on the C drive, so I'll select OK to this. A new window will appear, and this gives you a number of options to clear up disk space. At the minute, it says that I can free up 6.33 gig of disk space on the C drive. The first place we'll go is to select the clean up system files. Again, I'll select the C drive for this. This will now go off and calculate how much additional space you will be able to free up on the C drive for system files. This will take a minute or two while it scans for things like device driver packages, language resource files and Windows updates. Now this is only calculating at the minute and you can see once it's finished it brings you back to the disk cleanup window which now shows that I can free up 11.4 gig from the C drive. So I'll tick the box for Windows Update Cleanup, which will delete old versions of updates that are no longer needed. I'll also select the Windows Upgrade Log Files, which will give me back an extra 580 meg. Some boxes are automatically ticked like temporary internet files, which are fine. I'll scroll down the list and also tick Delivery Optimization Files. I'll also empty the recycle bin as this will save me 5.15 gig and tick the boxes for temporary files, temporary Windows installation files and user file history. You can tick more boxes for which files to delete, but I've ticked the boxes which will give me the most amount of space back. So in total it says that 11 gig is the amount of space I'll gain. I'll select OK to this. It will give you a warning asking you are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? I'll confirm and select delete these files. 
Now depending on how many files it's trying to clean, you'll find this may take a while, but once complete, the window will just disappear. Windows likes to keep details of your location history, but you can easily clear this. Go into Start, Settings, Privacy, Location, Then if you scroll down the window, you'll be able to see the location history which is stored on your computer, which can be used by apps that use your location. Select clear to clear the history on this device. Restore points are an area where you can find that you lose a lot of space and you can retrieve space back if you have too much space allocated for restore points. Do a search for restore in the taskbar and select the create a restore point from the results. When the system properties window loads, you want to go to configure, which will allow you to configure restore settings, manage disk space and delete restore points. Now you can see that my restore points are taking up 18 gig of space and this number will differ on your computer. If you're happy you don't need the current restore points, you can go ahead and delete all the restore points for this drive. This is useful, especially if you're tight on space. However, you should always have a restore point for recovery just in case you encounter an issue on your computer. You can then change the disk usage that you allocate to your restore points, so pick a percentage that works for you. I'll leave mine on 14%, which is just over 20 gig. Now, before you close out of this area, create a new restore point. I'll just call mine restore point one and select create. That will then go off and create the new restore point. Next, we'll delete the prefetch files. Prefetch files are created by the operating system each time an application is launched for the first time. These files are designed to make applications open faster, but you can delete these to clear up space. To delete these, go to run and type in prefetch. This will open the prefetch folder and here you can see all the prefetch files which have a .pf extension. I'll select the files here and delete them. The last type of cache to delete is your DNS cache. The DNS cache refers to the temporary storage of information about previous DNS lookups on a machine's operating system or web browser. Keeping a local copy of a DNS lookup allows your operating system or browser to quickly retrieve it meaning a website's URL can be resolved to its corresponding IP much more efficiently. To delete this cache, go to the taskbar and do a search for command prompt. I'll open this as administrator and type in the following command, ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS and hit enter. And now you can see that you've successfully flushed the DNS resolver cache. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more tutorials.